Apex Insider is made possible by the support of Global Eagle. Connect, entertain, empower with innovation from Global Eagle. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Apex Insider, the web series bringing you insight and opinion from thought leaders in the aviation industry. This week, we're shooting live on location at the BBC, and our special guest is none other than Aaron Hesselhurst, who is a seasoned BBC world presenter and host of the show Talking Business with Aaron Hesselhurst. Welcome, Aaron. Welcome to the BBC. You're <laughs> in my you. home. This is great to have you here. It's a beautiful home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do well sometimes, you know, five days a week. It's a bit much. But anyway, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. So Aaron, um, obviously you've been a, a business reporter for a long time, but you've got a real special thing for planes. Why are you so mad about aviation and airplanes? Just always had a pack. You know what? I don't know how I got the kerosene in my veins. I really don't. I don't come from a, a flying family, but I can tell you this. I do remember as a kid, long ago before you were a kid, uh, when we were boys used to, and girls, but used to make model, model airplanes. Mm -hmm. I ne and everybody, all the boys used to make Spitfires or Wellington bombers and that. I was making KLM DC 10 <laughs> and 747s and I mean just, and I don't know where that came from and we could never play together because I'd come with a Boeing 747 and they'd have a Spitfire and we're like, we can't play together Aaron, you, you know, I was, I don't know. Um, I've just always had this, 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 this passion for, I just think, and I think they're beautiful looking. They're a beautiful piece of uh, industrial design. Well, I couldn't agree more and I think um, our audience yeah, will obviously everybody, agree Everybody loves well. planes. Put it this way. Four billion people flew last year, and that number we know is only is only going to go up. Mm -hmm. People love love to travel, mm -hmm. and obviously love to love to fly and love um, love aviation in general. So speaking of loving aviation, last week we had the Farnborough Air Show yep. here in the UK, and you did some some live hits and lots of filming. Lots of live all day from there. One of the days, yeah. So who did you talk to and what did you talk to them about? We, uh, do you want me to just rattle them off and then we can go through some topics. Okay. Uh, Dennis Muhlenberg, the, the big boss of Boeing. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke to, um, <laughs> I assume we forget. Now, uh, I spoke to um, one of the bosses of Talos, about the, uh, the boss of the in-flight entertainment system, the French company, of course, where they provide 70 airlines with their in-flight uh, entertainment system, including Wi-Fi. That's a big thing nowadays. Uh, we spoke to a, a pilot training school. We were talking about the global shortage of pilots and how many are needed to, to pilot the thousands, the tens of thousands of planes that are coming in the next 20 years. Um, oh, we, a whole raft of uh, experts. We spoke to, to Air, but we spoke to the plane makers in general, all four. There's an interesting story, as you know, with what's happening with them. Um, and of course, also just uh, generally and importantly, very importantly, as a passenger, the passenger experience. We spoke yeah. to a lot of people about that. Okay, so what was the big, big news in your opinion, if you could take one or two of the announcements that you think are really important from through the lens of a business uh, journalist? Uh, the big standout straight away is, and again, for your average punter, it's not that, mo it's not that exciting, but I'm going to talk about air cargo. So you know, I do a lot of conferences around the world. I've been doing them for about six, for the aviation industry, mm -hmm. the IATAs, et cetera, yeah. um, for oh, some 16, 17 years now. And, Air Cargo approached me about 10 years ago, and I was like, oh, I know about Air Cargo. Air Cargo is fundamental to our global economy. It is the, it's the oil that greases the wheels of the global economy, and what stood out at Farnborough is that Air Cargo is on the way up. Of course, post the crisis, the financial right. crisis of 2008, Air Cargo took a, a big hit. Yep. And Air Cargo is in really important because it's a lead indicator to the mm -hmm. global economy. So uh, a lot of freighters, were being sold, air freighters. Uh, uh, of course, you've got the freight side and then you've got uh, under the belly, under the passenger seat. Do you know this, for example, just think of this number. Every single day in the world, there's 100,000 flights carrying 10 million passengers and underneath them, $18.5 billion worth of air cargo. When we talk about air cargo too, we talk about our mobile phones. Everybody's got a smartphone. Smartphones, tablets, medication, produce, and flowers, mm -hmm. they're the big things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so air cargo is, is looking a lot healthier, which is, uh, again, good indicator yeah. for all of us, the global economy. So that, that stood out. Um, what also stood out? Uh, I think, you know, again, you, you got the sense of the, this, this big race uh, that we're seeing with airlines all around the world um, of, uh, if you ain't got flat business class seat or a flat bed, you ain't, you know, you're, you're not operating. That's a, a big race to get the best products in that, in that section of the cabin, mm -hmm. which makes the most profit, of course, for, for an airline. So that's very important. They nail that. Uh, I spoke to the big boss of Qatar Airways. 
a uh, very good airline, um, um, Akbar Al Bakr, and they had on display, and they're very proud of it, and they should be. The, the Q Suite, yeah, we've all seen the Q Suite, the first uh, airline to, for, a, for a business class product with your own private door mm -hmm. on, the, on the seat. Um, and then the whole concept of the seats in the middle, the four, you can go as family, business meetings, close that off. Pretty flash product. Yeah, and I think with QSuite as well, you can really personalize the entertainment experience a lot more too. You can download the oh. app, you can make your own playlist of movies and content mm. on your mobile phone, and then you can connect that to the entertainment system on board so it's a seamless entertainment. You know, when you stop watching your film, it holds exactly where it was. Yep. Next time you're on board, picks it right back up. When you're transiting, so, you're talking about, because yeah, a lot yeah. of times obviously you're going through Doha, and like when I fly to Sydney, you know, exactly. It's the London Doha and mm -hmm. then Doha to Sydney. So you can pick that up. But you know what's interesting? You're just touching on that subject is um, uh, the, the, the big boss of, of Talos. And I asked him the question that, because they were unveiling the, the, you know, they've got this whiz-bang Wi-Fi now, very fast. Yeah. You can think, they've got about 300 passengers. If they're all on it at once, they want to make sure they've got the speed and they're able to get the, the downloads. Um, and I said that with this Wi-Fi nowadays, is that eating into the traditional business of in-flight entertainment? Because you said it, you come on with your tablet and you come on with your smartphone, and a lot of people watch their own content. You can, or you could watch your own content with Wi-Fi. And his answer, well, he, well they supply Wi-Fi as well, tell us, not just the in-flight whole system, but um, he said, no, it's, it's complimentary. He said, think about what happens in a living room at home. Exactly. And you stop, and it's a multi-screen living room nowadays, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, but um, the, the, the capabilities of Wi-Fi up there nowadays and what's to come is, is pretty phenomenal. It makes for a great passenger experience. It's super exciting. As long that. as there's not a lot of phone calls, that's going to be, you know... If you're using internet for, for phone calls, people don't want to do that, do they? No, I don't think many people do that on no, board. I haven't heard. No, I haven't heard no. many. All right, so would you say that the mood at the air show was uh, generally good? I know in the political landscape, there's kind of a lot moving and shaking mm. uh, last week in particular. Um, so, you know, what was your sense of that? The mood, the mood is good. So, you know, the Farnborough, as, as most people know, it's, it's every two years. Um, in 2016 at Farnborough, there was $124 billion dollars of business, of deals done. They expect, certainly hoping, to top that um, for 2018. Uh, no, the mood is generally good. I mean, the airline, the airlines again for 2018, the estimated um, net profit is going to be $34.5 billion. So the airlines are still in profit. It varies in the regions, but mm -hmm. the airlines are in profit. Um, so they're happy at the moment. But yeah, you, you, you mentioned it, the, 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 the clouds that are on the horizon um, is particularly the Trump administration and Beijing, and this threat of a, of a trade war between the world's two biggest economies has a lot of them very concerned, keeping up. The big boss of Boeing. Right. China is its number one customer. Uh -huh. uh, China's the number one customer for most. China's going to become the biggest aviation market very quickly. It's the second one. The very US soon. is bigger, but it's going to overtake the US. Uh, the projections of aircraft no, uh, on order and, and, and expected to be ordered uh, over the next... 20, well, Boeing says 43,000 new aircraft in the next 20 years. I mean, that's, that's just staggering. And uh, the biggest percentage will go to the Asia-Pacific region, and mm -hmm. in particular, China. So if you're shackled from doing business with China, you know, you don't want that. That's a, that, that causes for a concern. So th that, there's a big concern there. And then also just the, 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 the general trade. If there's a slump in trade, mm -hmm. um, and jobs, we see job losses, for example, as the economies weaken, which inevitably they do in a, in a trade war. That's proven. Yeah. Um, job losses, job losses, no money, people fly less, yeah, and it, imp it impacts the industry. So they're watching that scenario, that situation, um, between the world's two biggest economies very, very closely. Um, hmm. All right. Um, being media at the event, there's a lot of media at a lot of media, yeah. And I think they're pretty well provisioned for as well with the nice media platforms and viewing mm -hmm. areas and things to shoot from. So uh, I just kind of wanted to ask, like, from, from the perspective of a journalist as part of the media, what, how would you characterize the relationship, I guess, between airlines and the media? Uh, how, do we affect, how do we affect what, what they're doing and how the industry um, is perceived? We need them, they need us. No, but <laughs> look, for a general, we know for um, our general audience, we get about 100 million viewers 
uh, a week on BBC World News. And we know that the general profile is that they, a lot of them are, are travellers, mm -hmm. they fly. Um, but it's just, it's just for, from a media perspective, from my perspective, it's just such an important industry. As I mentioned, air cargo, grease, you know, oils, the, uh, the wheels of the global economy. But you look at aviation industry itself, uh, $2.7 trillion is what it contributes every year to the global economy. 63 million jobs rely on the aviation sector. It's an important industry to cover. Um, you know, the, the stuff that I mentioned in the bellies of planes and freighters is $6.7 trillion worth. That's the, every year. That's what they carry. Um, it's 30% of all the value of all world trade goes up in a plane. It's pretty, pretty phenomenal. And as I said earlier, you know, four, four billion people, four billion trips last year. That number's set to be six billion in the next few years. I mean, it's just, it's just an industry that you, I personally think, being an navigate too, that you, you can't avoid not to, not to cover. Very important. It is very important. Do you think we ever do them a disservice in the media sometimes? Uh, not, not my outlet or yours, for example. Never! Um, what? <laughs> no, what? No, a disservice? In terms of, I think, um, maybe focusing too much on negative news. Well, well let's be frank. Then. <laughs> Good news don't sell, does it? <laughs> um, yeah, sure it can happen. I'm not saying it happens on the BBC, but I'm sure it does happen. Uh, you know, around the world we've seen it. You know, I mean... Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a, a story that, that was kind of bled to death, if you will, um, in terms of maybe a passenger experience. Well, United Airlines dragging a passenger off down the, down the corridor. That was a doozy. That was a doozy. <laughs> that was a good story to cover, but, you know, there's a bit of a PR. Although, you know, you say that. It wasn't a PR. It wasn't that bad PR. The passenger numbers didn't drop. Yeah. Passenger numbers didn't drop. So go, go, go figure. Yeah. Um, They've also had, the media have had a lot of fun with the, um, the, 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 the sisters that are in the family that runs Korean Air. Oh, yes. Peanut Gate, remember that one? Peanut Gate, yep. And then the, another sister had to apologise, a lot of bowing going on. I <laughs> uh, had to apologise for pouring water on, I think it was an ad executive or, or some, some a, a, a worker there. Um, but in general, uh, in general, I should say, I uh, try not to um, do a disservice to the industry. I hope I do it a very good service. I hope the same thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we've got for... That's it? Aaron. That's it, we're done. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, um, where can our audience go to uh, watch your show? Uh, or if they want to follow you on social media or find you online, um, mm. where can we direct them? You can find me um, on Twitter. You can get me at BBC Aaron. And my show, Talking Business with Aaron Heselhurst, is 2.30 p.m. UK time. So it's early morning across the United States. It's primetime evening in Asia. Mm -hmm. But where, if, you, if you want, please watch. It's a fun show. It's only half hour, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, 2.30 p.m. UK time. Just look it up, check it out, and you can watch it uh, online outside of the UK or, um, or on BBC World News on the, uh, on the telly. Okay. Thank you, Erin. I hope everybody does that. Um, and for everybody who's watching, please take a minute and subscribe to the Apex YouTube channel. You can visit www.apex.aero for more great passenger experience, news, and events. For Apex Insider, I'm Marianne Simpson.